Welcome to your 10 minute pelvic floor movement workout. We're going to start with our lunges. So we're just going to come forward and back, forward and back. This time, as you go forward, I want you to bring the same arm up and then reach through. And arm and reach. Getting some thoracic mobility. Both feet should be facing forward. Go to whatever feels good for you. We're wanting to keep that back foot on the ground. So really focus on that. Really reach through. So reach it up, reach through. Reach it up, reach through. As you reach through, allow that upper body to reach over to the side slightly. Reach through. Should feel amazing, especially if you've been sitting a bit. And reach through. All right, switching legs. So we're just starting with that lunge, stepping forward. Then bring it up and reach through. Up, reach through. Great work. Keep it going. Reach it through. Uh, I love this movement with my arms. It's one that I will do after sitting for a while. Gets that great thoracic stretch. You can do it anywhere, which is always nice. And up, last one. And open, shake it out. We're going into our three-way lunges. So we're going to go forward, then side, and then diagonally back. And forward, side, Diagonally back, bring your arms up, and we're going to go into a little bit of a rotation with it. Get some thoracic movement, and side, and back, and forward, side, and back. Really waking up our core, getting some movement, different ways in the pelvic floor. Couple more. Side and back. One more. Forward. Side and back. And taking it to the other side. So we're going forward, side, and diagonally open. Forward, side, diagonally open with the hands. Some thoracic mobility. Keeping them at about shoulder height. What this is doing is it's really waking up into our core, into our obliques, to our lats, our thoracic spine, all of what is connected to both our abs and into that pelvic floor with our movements. We need nice mobility in our thoracic area in order to help our lumbar spine stay nice and still and to stabilize us. Often back pain comes from when our lumbar spine, so our lower spine is doing more work than it should because our thoracic area is locked up. All right, now we're going into some squats. So we're going to Squat to one side and then to the other. So just stepping. You can go as wide or as deep as feels good for you or as narrow and as shallow. All right. This time we're going to reach up and reach up. This puts a little more effort into our pelvic floor as we're reaching up overhead. It may not feel as comfortable. You might not be able to go as low. That's okay. Keeping it going side to side. Great work. We're going to go down after this one. So now we're going to bring our arms down around that outside knee. What you may find is that you can go wider and deeper as our arms are down, that's totally normal. We are using our glutes and hamstrings more as our arms are down. 
So it makes it a little bit easier for us to work through this. But, as you might know, kids like being lifted overhead. We often have plates up high. So we need to be able to reach up as well as reach down. So we need to train both ways. Right, let's do a couple more. And last one. Shake it out. We're going to go into a wider sumo squat this time. All right. Now, if this doesn't feel comfortable on the pelvic floor, come narrower and just do little bounces. Otherwise, come wider. And we're just going to go into that and we're going to punch forward. Punch forward. With this, you're going to hinge, punch forward. So squeeze those glutes, but push the hips forward. Not allowing the rib cage to go. We're pushing forward and forward. Working into that pelvis, keeping that rib cage down. Exhale as you go up. Two more. And now this time I want you to reach to the side, pushing that hip out. Push, push, push. One side, then the other. Really allow yourself to reach and reach. Allow that hip to move. Push it and push. Remember we're hinging and pushing. Hinge and push, hinge and push. Great work. Two more. Push and push. And this time to the back. To the back. If it's uncomfortable on your shoulder coming back, I want you to think row. Row. We're getting that internal rotation of our hips here. Row. Row. Or throw. Throw, throw, whichever feels good for you, you're still rotating into the hips. Few more. And two more. One and two. Shake it out, great work. We're going into our last exercise. We're going into a wide staggered lunge, okay? So squat that shoulder hip width apart, bring that foot back, and we're going to bounce, bounce. Just little bounces as fast as you can. Don't think about anything. If it's uncomfortable in your pelvic floor, narrow your feet and go slower. Otherwise, you're with me, we're bouncing, and we're going to open out that back foot. And now both feet are turned out and we're bouncing. I want you to think about bringing your hips slightly forward. So it's not a sumo squat, but slightly forward. This is going to give a little bit of internal rotation with that bouncing. In that hip, external into this hip. And keep it going for five more seconds. Great work. Again, if it's uncomfortable, narrow your feet. Make the bounces slower. Bring your feet in. So your pigeon toe. Start facing this way. Pigeon toe. And then if you can, rotate slightly to the front as you do it. Allow yourself to bounce. Allow that pelvic floor to respond naturally. Don't think about it. Just keep Bouncing, letting your pelvic floor respond to your movement. We got five more seconds. Bringing it in, bouncing, great work, and shake it out. Well done. Let's take note how you feel. If you feel a little heaviness, maybe it's causing you to think about needing to go to the toilet. With this, I want you to bring everything in narrower and slow it down. So you'll be in this position versus this position. All right, otherwise you're with me, staggered lunge, feet forward and bounce. Bringing it down, shaking it up. You got it. 
We need to train our pelvic floor to respond without us having to think. This is how we're going to be able to run, how we're going to be able to jump on a trampoline, how we're going to be able to chase after those toddlers who want to run across the road without us. Just keeping on going and bring that back foot out and start in that semi squat and then once you feel comfortable, rotate that hip forward. That knee should still be going out over that middle toe, but your hip will be slightly internally rotated, getting just a different part of that pelvic floor. Keeping it going. Great work. You're doing amazing. This is our last exercise. All right. And let's bring our feet in and pigeon toe it. This one's hard. Really focus on those feet. Think about that tripod foot. Rotate in a little bit and working into those hips. Thinking about making sure those three points on your feet, under your big toe, little toe, and the back of your heel is on the ground, supporting those arches. And take a couple more moments. Shake it all out. And bring it in. Great work. Take a moment. Step it out. I want you just to center yourself. Bring your feet hip width apart. Focus on those three points on your feet, activating into those arches. One hand on your chest, one hand on your belly. Eyes shut. Inhale through your nose. Feel your belly expand, but your chest stay down. Back expand. Exhale through the mouth. Belly should come in. Everything contract. Inhale. Feel that expansion, relaxation. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. You did amazing. If you enjoyed that workout, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you are notified when new workouts are released. And check out Confident Fitness for Mums, where there are hundreds of diastasis and pelvic floor safe workouts and monthly calendars to follow.